Why, hello there, Realmwalker. We've received word that you've been wandering the Fey Wilds without proper knowledge of how to best survive. Because of this, we've crafted this ultimate beginner's guide to aid you on your trek to Nightingale. Now, if you've yet to venture out on your own, might I suggest choosing the forest as your abeyance realm, aka the realm you'll call home at the start of your journey. This choice comes into play after a few tutorial style lessons from our dear friend Puck. And I'm suggesting this because the forest is the most welcoming of the three choices. The water of the forest isn't trying to kill you like the water of the swamp, and the sun of the forest isn't trying to melt you like the one in the desert. Whatever you choose, keep in mind, this decision is not permanent. If you've already made your choice and you've grown to dislike that location, you can just craft another abeyance card to combine with the biome you'd like to switch to. You see, my friend, this world features three different types of realm cards. Biome, Major, and Minor. The first two are used exclusively at portals in order to tell it where you'd like to go. The Abeyance card is one of such major cards, and it dictates what will be waiting for you in the realm that you create. These parameters can include things such as the NPCs, the enemies, the difficulties in the quests. For example, combining a Forest Biome card with an Abeyance Major card will make it so that you end up in a forest with creatures that, while hostile, are far less threatening to your existence than they are in the other realms. Abeyance realms are also the only type that can be made into your home realm or your respite. The Antiquarian card is the next major card you'll get your hands on, and that card will create a realm of quote, middling danger settled by druids and rife with fey ruins. Other types of major cards include Astrolab, Provisioner, Herbarium, Bloom, and Hunt. And just in case you're wondering, the blueprints for guns can be found in the Provisional Realms. And unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a way to get there fast. But when you do, might I suggest a Forest Provisional Realm? For that is where you will find the Pistol, an excellent choice for the times where you need a powerful, quick, one-handed weapon. Now, the only way to get these major cards are by completing Sites of Power. These dungeons are located in your Abeyance Realm, and because they're so heavily tied to major cards, they're incredibly important to your progression. Sites of Power usually consist of puzzles, combat, traps, and a concluding boss fight. In order to enter these locations, you must first meet the required gear score. You can check your score by opening the inventory and looking at the number in the green box. This score is tied to the clothes that you are wearing and the tool that you have in your hand. And that last part's important, governor. <clears throat> Excuse me. That last part's very important. You may have a high level tool in your inventory, but it won't count towards your score unless it is in your hand at that moment. The best way to increase your score is to craft better weapons and gear as you explore. One way I quickly increased my score to 20 early on was to rob, <coughs> I mean borrow, from my companion. One of the first NPCs you talk to will be near an essence trader and a recruitable NPC. And once you've hired that person, you'll have access to their entire inventory, including the clothes on their back which happen to be a higher level than the ones you are starting out with. So, politely, strip your companion of their clothes and give them your lower quality stuff in exchange. Just make sure you right click the item in their inventory and choose equip because they can't get dressed on their own and will otherwise walk around in their bloomers like everything is sweet and dandy. What a whopper up. But your companion's pockets aren't good for just 
stealing. They're also a perfect way to take some weight off your shoulders. As you might expect, going over the weight you can carry will significantly slow you down. And just in case you're like me, keep in mind the items on your hotbar will count towards your total weight. Companions don't have many inventory slots, but they also don't have a weight limit like you do. So feel free to dump some crafting materials into their hands for safekeeping. Handing off materials can also be useful when building situations arise, as companions can add them to the item you're already building. For example, I was getting hungry in the middle of the woods, so I stopped to make a campfire. I quickly realized I'd given away my rocks, turned to grab more off the ground, and when I turned back, I witnessed my companion completing the fire with the rocks I had given him. A true friend! I should have shared my food with him after he showed me such kindness. Oh well. But now let's talk about some other important parts of your adventure. You may think of Realm Walker as just a quirky nickname, but you aren't called that for nothing. You'll be doing a whole lot of walking throughout the realms you visit. Unfortunately, there are no mounts to speak of here, so please do not attempt to ride the wolves, the boar, or the elk-like creatures that you encounter. This could very well result in the end of you. On the bright side, your walks won't be boring as there's a lot to see and do, including secrets and treasures to find outside of the ones found in the Sites of Power. Keep an eye out for the following points of interest as you explore each realm. Defense. You will cross paths with followers who, as the name suggests, need help defending something. Aid. Sometimes you'll happen upon a survivor that has not finished crafting their base and needs your help gathering materials and putting them in their place. Occupation. These are locations that have been overrun with an enemy type of that realm, and it is up to you to clear them out. Apex Creatures. A creature of legend that you can see on your map as a roaming icon. Take it down and collect the special materials that it dropped. And Bastille Challenges, which will test your platforming skills and memory to name a few. With the exception of Apex Creatures, these points of interest aren't displayed on your map when you spawn into a realm. This leaves you with two choices. You can either find them all organically by exploring every inch of the map, or you can jump straight to that realm's Fey Tower, which is always displayed on your map when you spawn in. I suggest going straight to the Fey Tower, and here's why. These are mini dungeons with enemies and traps, and once you reach the top, you're rewarded with all of the points of interest locations displayed right there on your map for you. Rewards for these points of interest come in the form of blueprints for base items and essence, an important currency that comes in four forms. For starters, there is the gray essence dust. This can be extracted from all items and is found around the abeyance realms. If you ever get the urge to drop something so that you can lighten your load, don't. Always turn the item into essence dust. The next level is Green T1 Essence, aka Tier 1 Essence, and this type can be found in Antiquarian, Astrolobe, and Provisioner realms. T2 Essence is blue and can be found in Gloom, Herbarium, and Hunt realms. And finally, T3 Essence is purple and can be found in the Ascended version of the realms. Another way that I sped up my gear score process early on was to collect lots of materials like plant fiber and sticks, then convert them to essence dust, and use that dust to buy the animal hides I needed for my leather and straps from the essence trader. Those plant materials are much, much easier to find than the animals, and I saved a decent amount of time. And speaking of saving time, you can fast travel back to your base whenever you want using the travel to respite button to the left of your map. Unfortunately, fast travel is limited to just one point. I've already tried to use multiple estate Karens and only the one listed as my respite was the one I could teleport to. The good news, however, is that fast travel is unlimited, instant, 
and there is no cooldown associated with it. So feel free to even use it when you're trying to escape death in a sticky situation. But because you can only have one point of respite, I suggest building it next to the portal. I didn't do this and wasted a lot of time running from my base back to the portal that I was using up until the point that I could craft my own portal. And now that we've arrived at the topic of building, I just want to let you know that the build mode is the X key. This mode allows you to copy pieces for whatever you're building, fully constructed or not. You can also move certain items around and remove items without whacking it with a pickaxe. No shade to Fortnite. My other favorite base tips have to do with crafting and workbenches. Pay attention to the traits attached to these because they can dramatically affect your crafting speed. For example, building a simple workbench on the ground can cause it to have the grit trait, aka items will take longer to craft. However, if you put it on even ground, put a roof above it, and ignite a fire nearby, it will activate three buffs at once that will speed up your crafting. And to check these traits, hold the E key over any workbench and choose inspect. Now, before I leave you to wander the Fey Wilds alone, I've got a couple more small tips that I'd like to share with you. Such as hitting the caps lock key will enable auto walk and hitting shift thereafter will add a run. Just be aware that this method will still use up your stamina and you'll have more stamina and better regeneration of it the more rested you are. And short rest can even be stacked, so spam the E key over and over until you feel energized like me after way too much coffee. And if you want to show off a little, hitting F5 will put you in third person mode without having to fumble through the menus. Did someone say fit check? When you're roaming about, Look out for cracked walls. These often contain chests, but they can also be hiding the answer to a puzzle at a point of interest. Empty ones do exist too, so you, you might get disappointed. And if you're sick of looking at whatever you're holding, I'm talking to you, meat wrapped up in lettuce. Hit the H key to put it away. One item I love to hold is the sling bow, and I want to let you know that the ammo for the sling bow are the rock marbles. It doesn't fire arrows. So no need to hunt for that blueprint. I was like looking for way too long and I was like, oh, oh, this is, this is what, uh, okay. And lastly, clicking with each swing of your ax can fell a tree faster than just holding the left mouse button down. You're welcome. Now, is there anything you still wanna know about that we missed? Do you have tips of your own? Comment down below and help out your fellow realm walkers and check out a bunch of our guides for Nightingale over on GameSpot.com. Whatever that is, I'm from the Victorian era, so I don't really know what websites are. Thanks for watching.